Guppies are a favourite among aquarium hobbyists, myself included, but they have various myths surrounding them. That's why I decided to publish this video addressing and debunking some of the more common myths about guppies to provide a clearer, more accurate picture of this wonderful species. Myth number one. Guppies are a hardy, beginner-friendly fish contrary to popular belief, today's guppies aren't necessarily hardy. Many modern lines have been inbred for generations to achieve specific colours, tail shapes and patterns which has significantly weakened their overall genetics. A research paper that studied three groups of wild-caught guppies each bred for four generations found that even minimal inbreeding resulted in guppies that were weaker than their wild-caught counterparts. The heavily inbred group saw survival rates against a common native parasite drop from 96% to 58%, demonstrating just how detrimental inbreeding can be. Keep in mind those four generations of guppies can occur in under six months in ideal conditions. Some common line-bred guppies have been inbred for far longer, leading to even weaker fish. Another example comes from the YouTube channel Albert's Guppy Adventure, where his experiment tracked two groups of five guppy fry over 31 days on different diets. Unfortunately, 40% of the guppies were lost during this short period, showing how fragile certain lines have become. It's worth noting these fry were younger than the age Albert ships his guppies and he has a solid reputation for sending out healthy, more mature fish. The point is, guppies aren't as robust as they once were and there's a valid argument they're no longer the ideal beginner-friendly fish. If you're just starting out and your heart is set on guppies, look for assorted or mutt guppies which may have fewer inbred traits and thus greater resilience. Another good alternative is the smaller Endler Guppy, known to be a bit tougher, at least for now. To be clear, I'm not trying to dissuade anyone from keeping guppies, I love them myself and plan to get more. My goal is simply to provide a more accurate picture of their current challenges so that enthusiasts can make informed decisions. Myth number two, guppies don't need a heater. Many care guides note that guppies can live in water as low as 17 degrees Celsius or 63 degrees Fahrenheit, referencing documented water temperatures for wild and feral populations. However, as we've already established, modern guppies aren't nearly as resilient as their ancestors and they tend to fare better with a heater in the tank. In my fish room, the temperature hovers around 18 degrees Celsius during winter, just within the recommended range. I observed that my two blue guppies became sluggish as the weather cooled, so I installed a small heater set to its lowest setting of 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, my two blues and two new yellows are now lively and constantly swimming. In the UK, typical winter indoor temperatures range from 18 to 21 degrees Celsius, so some people might not need a tank heater. Personally, I'm keeping a heater in mine and setting it to 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit for peace of mind. Although many recommend higher temperatures like 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit, research suggests guppies have faster metabolisms in warmer water, potentially shortening their lifespan by placing extra strain on their organs. Organs. Additionally, guppy breeding yields can be influenced by water temperature with cooler water producing more female fry and warmer water resulting in more males. Myth number three, guppies will eat anything. Guppies are omnivores with hearty appetites and spend much of their time foraging. I've seen mine devour soft algae and detritus countless times and feral guppy populations in Germany, France and Nigeria appear to survive primarily on algae, detritus and any insects they come across. However, just because guppies can eat a wide range of foods doesn't mean they should be limited to random scraps of low quality food. One study showed that both adult and juvenile guppies thrive when fed a diet high in fish meal with the fish growing larger than the other test groups. Unfortunately, no insect-based foods were tested and the adult group included fish of varying ages, slightly skewing the data. I give my guppies high quality foods with protein as the main ingredient alternating between fluval bug bites and NT Labs micro crumb. 
This rotation shifts their primary protein source between black soldier fly larvae and fish meal, aiming for a more diverse nutritional profile. Because my guppies share a tank with cherry shrimp, they also nibble on the algae wafers I add for the shrimp. I can't guarantee my guppies never eat baby shrimp, but having housed guppies and neocaridina shrimp together in multiple tanks, I've watched adult guppies swim right past baby shrimp plenty of times without bothering them. I've caught them snacking on dried duckweed clinging to the glass after water top-ups too. Essentially, guppies will happily consume a wide range of foods, but they generally do best when offered protein-rich foods. Myth number four, you can keep guppies by themselves. Technically, yes, you can keep a single guppy on its own. However, based on my experience, guppies are social creatures and tend to thrive in groups. For instance, I quarantined my two new yellow guppies together at first and they were active and constantly swimming around. Then, one started leaning to the side and occasionally clamping its tail, so I split them into separate quarantine tanks. Immediately, both fish became less active, hiding among the hornwort instead of swimming around. After a few weeks, I moved the healthier yellow guppy into my main tank and its behaviour changed right away. It began swimming about and sparring with my two blue guppies almost instantly returning to its previous behaviour. A couple of weeks later, I added the other yellow guppy as I suspected a genetic issue rather than an infection was causing the issues and it also became more active once it rejoined the group. I also found three research papers indicating that guppies are capable of social learning, adjusting their foraging and feeding habits based on their peers. So while it is possible to keep a single guppy, they don't display their full range of natural behaviours without the company of others. Myth number five, male guppies won't fight if there are no females present. All male guppy tanks can be a fantastic way to enjoy these fish without worrying about uncontrolled breeding. However, some people claim that males won't fight without females, but in my experience, this simply isn't true. I've kept several all-male guppy tanks over the past couple of years and there has always been tail fanning, sparring and chasing. Interestingly, I've noticed that things calm down when there are at least 8 guppies together or roughly 1 guppy per gallon of water in larger tanks, though some sparring remains as it's part of their natural behaviour. These behaviours stem from guppies continually establishing and maintaining their dominance hierarchy regardless of whether females are present or not. Fortunately, physical harm is rare and mostly just posturing and chasing rather than genuine aggression. Research suggests guppies can recognise each other's faces, helping them settle into a hierarchy so long as submissive males yield to dominant ones. Another study indicates individual personalities play a role in how aggressive they may be. In short, while all male guppy tanks typically don't have serious fights, some level of sparring is to be expected, it's just part of their natural behaviour. Anyway guys, that brings the video to an end. Guppies are a great species and as I mentioned earlier, I plan to get more in the coming months. I just wanted to share my experiences and provide a more realistic perspective on keeping them. I hope the video has been helpful, thanks for watching and have a good day.